The conversion of mass into energy is a pretty easy concept for most of us to grasp. You know, you burn a piece of wood, some of it turns into ash, but most of it's gone. It dispersed into heat, and that heat is thermal energy, so that's mass converting into energy. But we know also that energy converts into mass, interchangeably, which is a strange concept for us to grasp as physical beings. The idea of that wood turning into heat and then the heat turning back into a different type of wood. That's not literally what happens with wood and heat, but it's an easier way to imagine what we're talking about. Another aspect of this that's crazy to imagine is how they collide photons and get physical matter. Photons are not physical particles in the way that protons or ions are. Those things have physical mass, but photons aren't physical particles. They have no mass. They're packets of pure electromagnetic energy. They're like condensed pockets of light. So when they smash together photons, they're making two different pockets of energy collide, and after that, they get physical matter. So when two high-energy photons collide, they make an electron-positron pair, which is a particle and an antiparticle. With even stronger collisions, they can make more massive pairs, like muon and anti-muon pairs. So they're turning energy into matter. This is what some might want to call getting something from nothing, but it's not actually nothing that it's coming from. It's that there's always something, it's just in different forms. What's also kind of crazy is that quantum physicists describe all physical particles as being condensed packets of energy, the same way we imagine photons. So from that perspective, there's no such thing as just strictly physical. Again, it's like looking out over an ocean and looking perfectly level at it from the sides. We won't see the flat water, you know, that's just a flat line, basically, and that would represent a quantum field. When there's a disturbance in the water, we will see the waves sticking up over the flat plane of water. Those waves are the excitations in the water, just like physical particles are the excitations in a quantum field. Of course, instead of a flat plane of water level, you have to imagine this quantum field as being multidimensional which is where it can be tough to translate the analogy, but I hope that helps. My point is that it doesn't really matter what you believe about this, it happens all the time. And before people deny it, they should really read the studies and just maybe even take a basic course in particle physics and quantum mechanics, because they have plenty cheap or even free options online, and it's worth it. It's a major piece of the puzzle when you're trying to understand the nature of reality here. All of this kind of points in an interesting direction when you realize that there is no mass without energy, but there is energy without mass.